Hello, and welcome to another edition of Living Simply and Fun, and we got a real treat here. This is the Alec Bradley Crescendo. Excuse me for one minute while he talked. Oh, I guess she wasn't ready. I wasn't. My eyeglasses are so dirty I can't so, see. This is no longer on the market, amazingly. So, if you got some, cherish them. Uh, it is uh, a Honduran wrapper, Honduran binder, and Nicaraguan Hondil uh, Honduran long fillers. Uh, this was an exclusive to Holt Cigars. And uh, apparently the only other thing I can find out about it is it was apparently named because as you smoke it, it gets stronger from this end to this end. So it starts out like mild, medium, ends up medium, full. It's listed as a is medium to full body totally cigar. Is it that Vitola Torpedo? Or Unfortunately, I couldn't find this Vitola listed anywhere. I could find three different Vitolas, one being a Robusto, one being a Toro, and one being something with just a size that didn't quite match up to this. So, Because it was too thin. It was like a 46 rain gauge, and this is at least a 50 here, I think. But... You know, I, I, my eyes are kind of shot sometimes, and it's hard to tell if that's 50 or less or more. Uh, especially when we like 60 ring gauges so much. Yes, exactly. So, oh. it's got a light hay, earthy smell, maybe some, uh, uh, um, what was the term I said? Hot barley. And barley. Yeah, uh, some barley smell in there with the... Uh, it's hey. actually a earthy, uh, an earthy, earthy yeah. Um, yeah. So, you got anything to say about the scent? No, but then again, most cigars nowadays that I've smoked, as you all know, have that earthy scent. So it's oh, it's very common, about. and that's because the leaves are grown in. Earth. Yes, we know and what it is. You don't have to explain. I'm just saying the nutrients go throughout. I just don't want people to think that one day I'm doing reserve re uh, reviews and I say, "Oh, this one, this yeah, one smells I, like peppermint." I do know? find so often that I I think that, geez, I sound like a robot saying what I'm smelling and what I'm tasting. It's like, could I do this in my sleep? Do I even have to smoke this to tell you a review on it? But yeah, uh, they do sometimes change from one cigar to another. Each cigar is different, so you know. Particularly on how it wants to be smoked, because each cigar seems to be slightly different in that aspect. Some want a faster smoke, some want to be smoked slower. They talk to you, I guess you could say. I want to thank Johnny Stick for the cigar. Yes. I also want to uh, say to any of you out there looking for our yesterday's videos, I was just too damn lazy to upload them, so I apologize from the bottom of my heart. We got those videos uploading now, and I mean, uh, being fused, and then we're going to upload them. It had videos. nothing to do with you being lazy. You were enjoying a video game on the computer and didn't want to get your butt off of it. Including to get off and do the review, so you sped, some, sped the review up a bit, too. I'm a bad girl. I, I admit it. I was addicted. So that was the other one, which was the Nub Cafe. So, uh, initial smoke, Saren. So far, just very mild, very creamy to begin with. Uh, no other real taste besides just kind of a creamy tobacco. I'm picking up rich creaminess, just pure cream right now. I hope that changes because I do like a good cigar that changes from time to time. So. Well, I suppose we'll get into the first third of this, and uh, we'll get back to you. It's 4.45 right now as yes, we start this. look for uh, our next video. Hello, and welcome back to this review of the Alec Bradley Crescendo. Um, I'm trying to figure out the words to put in. Are you done video. yet? No, I'm not done yet. You go, uh, you do your part first. No, you go first. I was being funny. I was being funny, everyone, because of two things. One is I'm trying to put together a project. The two is I was playing a video game. And today I'm in a little better mood once I got into my game, but I've had a bad day. So continue, Aaron. Hmm. Well, the flavor notes on this, they're eluding me. It's got some spice to it, that's for sure. 
not terribly spicy though. It's not like a Laharo spice, Laharo, that would uh, kind of be more on the peppery side. This is kind of more on the, uh, I don't know, like right, nutmeg-ish Right side. now I'm tasting just a pure cedar log, you know, or a cedar chest. Yeah, definitely cedar, but there's something there that I still can't put a finger on. Um, Sometimes God gives ideas to people to give these cigars that are elusive because then you won't figure it out. That's part of smoking cigars is smoking a box or two and figuring out what is uh, the, the flavor, you know. Very flavorful, though. I definitely have a knot in this one, though, and it does not want to work its way out. And I have to kind of open it up every couple minutes, honestly, uh, which I'm not enjoying too terribly much, but I can't complain too much. I'm still picking it up. A lot of smoke, uh, good flavor, full-bodied, in my opinion. Actually, it's a mild to medium, but it's going to go up in strength, but right now it's picking up. It's also still creamy and buttery and... Uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what type of wrapper was this, Aaron? Um, Honduran. That's all I could find out. So it's probably a Honduran Connecticut And uh, where's the poker? Right here. Anyways, I you, had... You've been thing... having some draw issues, too. Which, you know, that, that's not a big deal. Uh, as I was reading, uh, or I was told once, is that usually when you have a draw issue, it's because it was rolled slightly faster on one side than the other side. And it usually takes two hands to roll the wrap, so that just means Maybe somebody was a little faster. Maybe we got the with one uh, end of the last dick of the day, you know, that they rolled up throwing a box or whatever, you know. You but never anyways, know. but it's been very nice flavored, very, very nice flavor. I still am looking for a flavor to give that to closest I can come to is brown sugar without the sweetness just I don't know like that you, aroma you, could, in hand. you could sit here and talk for 90 minutes of what that flavor is and draw out the video too well I wish that I could actually give an answer so that somebody could sit there and say hmm so that's what I could expect uh, but this one really has this flavor in it that I can't just sit there and describe so easily I hate to say it, but it, it's, that's the truth, and I'm rarely stumped like that. Anyways, we'll get into the final third of this and get back to you. Yes, yes we will. Thank Hello, and welcome back to the final third of this Alec Bradley crescendo. Uh, I, I'm getting some leathery notes, mostly, with some spice. Uh, it definitely is picking up in flavor, uh, as it said it would. Uh, perhaps uh, even a little more in body, too. And this little guy here, everyone, is Moppy. Hello, Mopster. Oh, yeah. Come here. Boop, 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 boop. I'm it, picking up hints of leather. Um, the cedar is slowly tapering off. Um, a little, little, little light pepper. This has been a very tasty number, and I remember seeing these on Holtz a while ago, and I remember when they were being closed out, and I was like, should I get some? Should I not? Uh, I wish I kind of did. Because uh, this is actually really, really tasty. So. Oh, and to add to the review, I am playing the legendary 1995 game Diablo. Yep. That's why you can see this burning flawless pretty much. Yeah, you're burning much slower because you got something else to occupy your mind. So, and exactly. that always helps. It always helps to have something to keep you occupied so that you can sit down and puff. And sometimes, though, you'll forget about the cigar, and that's not good either. Yeah. Uh, and that, that has happened to me while reading, and I'm like, oh, great. It so, went question for you all in today's comment. I'm going to ask a question. Usually I don't, but here's the cigar question of the day. Do you have any suggestions or tips for flying with cigars, using it in your carry-on, because we're only using carry-on bags. I actually asked this someplace and was totally ignored by it. 20,000 uh, people as members, not one person would uh, take the time to answer. 
if you're going to fly, is it better to pre-cut your cigar or get a cheap cutter where you're going since you can't take your cutter with you? Unless you want to risk losing it. And for some um, of you out there, you probably already heard this before. I have a consultation in Miami. I wanted to be quickly in, quickly out, consultation done, go home. He wanted to go for cigar shop, so this well, will be... Uh, it's always nice to find a uh, brick and mortar and see if they have anything that you can't find at your local b brick and mortar. And brick and mortar sometimes do carry stock that you can't get in the catalog. So I always look for brick and mortar exclusives that it's like, you can only get this here. And it's like, really? Well, I'm going to give that a try. I mean, some brick and mortars will get in other things too. And uh, I, I know we, I was just talking to somebody the other day about Caldwell cigars. And Caldwell cigars are now able to be found online, but for a while they were something you could only find at the brick and mortar. So um, I think those Diamondbacks I tried were brick and mortar only. And we've tried the La Traviata from CAO, which was brick and mortar only. So. I, I kind of like finding those cigars because we only have like one place around here that's strictly cigars and they suck. So, <laughs> um, you mean big smoke? Yeah, no, they're, they're mostly cigarette tobacco. Uh, same with uh, like Evergreen too. Evergreen's mostly no sticks house of cigars. And your humidor is. As big as my living room here, picture And yet they only I'm have about 15, 20 boxes sitting of cigars. on a table. They don't even have them on the wall. Oh, no, they had some on the wall. Uh, but all the boxes were spaced apart by about a foot and a half or so. Like, here's a box, here's a big price tag, and then there's that much space between that box and the next one. And it was a big room, but they only had maybe 20, 25 boxes of cigars in there. And well, actually, it was way like 12 overpriced. when you complained the first time. That's uh, I, where we I got mean, the Ditka. Uh, yeah, well, look at their price on the the o Oliva nubs. Uh, it was like twelve dollars for one nub. It was fifteen. And you got uh, no, it was like twelve. It was but fifteen. I'm a nub queen. Remember? And anyways, at Evergreen, it's like seven ninety nine. You go online, it's like six ninety nine. Mike's to charging nine ninety nine nub. Remember, I told you that's mm -hmm. what all the nubs were. So. But just really overpriced there. So I won't deal with them. You also, it, it's a cigar club that promotes smoking, yet they have no place for you to smoke, and you can't smoke inside either. It's like, well, why am I going to go there? It's a cigar oh, lounge, I can't said, smoke. The lady in. said if we're on They have a nice property. bar, but you, you have to, you can't take your drink outside you with can, you. can, she said. Oh, yeah, it's fenced in. So you can take your drink outside with you, and there's a few tables outside in what looks like a really crappy little patio where it's like a wooden table. Yay. You know, you could sit four, uh, four maybe eight people at the wooden table. Yeah, our booze was high priced, too. I was looking at one of my micro brews I like, and I wanted nine ninety nine for a bottle. When I got that untapped, no, I'm paying it then. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> you know, uh... We need a real cigar shop, but, oh well, uh, a real cigar lounge. Yeah, and then if there was a real cigar lounge with drinking, I'd be drinking up all the profits. But what, from what I can tell where we're going on vacation, doesn't seem like there's many cigar, you know, lounges there or cigar shop. It seems that, again, their city has mostly tobacco shops that happen to sell cigars. So, anyways, um, I do... If you can find a crescendo, I recommend it. Chances are you're not going to find one, though. So, I hate to say it, but too bad. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to say if you find one, pick it up. You won't be disappointed. I highly recommend it. Re recommend it. Uh, I want to say thanks again to Johnny Sticks for this wonderful cigar. Yes, thank it's you so good. much. Uh, now knowing that this is a very rare cigar... Uh, it, it's just like, you can't put a price on it, you know? Oh, so. and talking about that group for one second, the one that Aaron was talking about, the question about the uh, travel, cut your cigars, most of them are starting out smoking Opus X's. Now, I've smoked cigars for 10 years. It's like, I'd like an Opus X, but you don't see me sitting here, first cigar of the day, Opus X. Yeah, actually, that's one thing that I really have a problem with in that group. 
is that almost everybody has to take a picture of their Opus X or Padron that they're smoking that day, and then their second stick is an Opus X or Padron, and their third stick is an Opus X or Padron. It's like, it almost feels like they're rubbing it in the face of everybody who can't afford those. So, here's one more question, and then we're signing off. Quantity or quality uh, for your cigar? Sometimes I like quantity over quality, but let's hear your opinion. Ring in. Well, please add and subscribe. Uh, no, no, no. She brings that up. The reason she brings that up is I got a box of these today. This is a very nice hardwood box. Um, cedar line? I don't think it's cedar line because it doesn't smell like cedar. Does that smell like cedar to you? But the bottom is cedar, it looks. Yeah, I don't know if it's cedar, though. Smell it. Doesn't that look like it cedar? It looks like it could be cedar, but it's all hardwood. And no matter what, it just doesn't smell like cedar. So you get a nice box. It's 15 bucks for 20 of these. They only come in one size. But this is definitely a quantity over quality. But I haven't tried them yet. It might be very good quality for what you get. I think they're usually $19.99. I ended up with five bucks off on it. So, Pata de Elefante. Not yep, it, game. Means, it means foot of the elephant. So, with that said, everyone, please add and subscribe. Please post comments, leave feedback, suggestions. May God bless you in everything you do. And, and enjoy, enjoy every, every puff. puff.